Welcome back to another episode of Kicking Tables. Today, we'd like to welcome Scott Rumps and Jay Goyke, the creators of Nexus, the board game here on OMG Nexus. It's like it's all coming together. It's all Meant coming to together. Be. It's faded. <laughs> Gen <laughs> gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having hey. us. Hey guys. It is our Thank pleasure you. to be here. So why don't we start off with giving you an opportunity to tell us exactly what is Nexus? Jay? Mm. Well, <laughs> it is it is our project, and uh, we've been working on it for quite some time now. It's, it, it, it's basically a, a depraved uh, center of all dimensions. Mm -hmm. it's, where, it's where all aliens have uh, come, like the greatest minds from every dimension figured out that there's no end to the universe, but there is a center to every universe. And uh, they've all assembled together to share a mutual love of violence and fame and money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how does the game play out? Well, you're trying to entertain these uh, fans. Yeah, these the alien, alien spectators. Bl bloodthirsty fans. And uh, they're watching these genetically engineered warriors fight to the death, but that's not how you win the game. You win the game by creating fame. So okay. you're in, in this game, um, while, while you have these gladiators kind of fighting each other, you're not the actual gladiators. You're their manager. You're like Don King. Okay. Um, and these are your little Mike Tysons. You don't care if Mike Tyson lives or dies, as long as you're making money and it's kind of boosting your ego and your fame. So um, that's kind of the little trick to our game, is while it's a gladiatorial arena fighting game, um, the real winning mechanism is whether or not they put on a good show for the crowd. And all players competing are actually competing against this crowd, too. That's one of the mechanics in the game. Oh. So um, as you're inflicting damage and as you're doing things, you're getting what's called cred, uh, which is signified by coins. Um, and, and the game almost plays out. If you if you see the board, you see coins all over the place. It's almost like a, a, a roulette table where coins are just being exchanged from this pile to this pile. Okay. Some of it will go into the crowd pile if damage is done by a hazard. Um, and hazards are things in the arena like floor spikes or floor saws or braziers. There's a, there's a bunch of things in the arena that's actually trying to kill all the combatants. So you're not only fighting each other, but you're fighting against the arena itself. As any arena is ought to do, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, you have your goal is to is to collect more cred than the opposing players or the crowd itself. And if oh. the crowd ends up with more cred than everybody else at the end of the match, then then the match is essentially a draw. Oh so, wow! So it's competitive, but you're also playing against the game. Exactly. So one wow. of Jay's favorite tax tactics when I'm kicking the crap out of him is he'll almost try and put himself in a situation where he'll get hit by a floor saw or something so the crowd will win and then that way the game's that way the game's a draw. And that way he so, at least at least you lose too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is true like that's what the Nexus is all about. Because that's how I play. I just want to make sure he doesn't win. <laughs> sure. I mean it's if I tactic. if if, yeah. if I can't win, no one else should win either, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Spoken like a true Lana stuff. <laughs> so what what is the origins of Nexus? How did you guys come up with this idea? And what sort of things did you take as inspirations in creating it? So the, the absolute origin was us as children. So we played a lot of RPGs growing up. We didn't have a real huge friend circle when it came to that. Like we played lacrosse and we played sports, but when it came to like our love for RPGs and things like that. And comic books. And comic books. <laughs> we did not have a whole lot of people that kind of shared that. So um, Jay and I would literally uh, play Dungeons and Dragons together. I remember getting on my bike and having a backpack that probably weighed about 80 pounds full of, you know, monster manuals and, and game master guides and stuff. And I'd pedal over to his house and we'd alternate. So one of us would be the, you know, dungeon master and the other person would like play through the campaign, which I don't know if you've ever done any groups like that in a role playing <laughs> game, yeah. but it, it, you know, it tends to get kind of old, kind of quick. <laughs> and um, what we did is we were like, okay, well, let's like strip down the stuff we like. Let's try and make this so we don't need really a game master. And what if we just kind of use these RPG combat rules in like an arena setting? And what could we do to make the combat rules more interesting? And we came up with this whole thing as kids, probably in middle school, that wow. we kind of wore out and played a lot. 
So fast forward, you know, 25 years, kids, jobs, all that boring crap. Um, and we, we, we get together, Jay takes me out to lunch and he was like, Hey, you remember that game that we used to do when we were a kid? He goes, you know, what do you think of maybe like as adults sitting down and, and really trying turning it into a game? And that's where, that's where the inception of the whole idea came from. Mm -hmm. And from there it was like, okay, well as adults, what are the things that we want in a game? The first thing was, is, um, and this is really like from the start of it. We really yeah. wanted it to be beer proof. <laughs> <laughs> we, and, and by beer proof, we meant like, you know, we wanted miniatures, but miniatures that you could use that, that you weren't worried about breaking. Like you wanted, we wanted to be able to sit down and play a game with guys drinking beers and maybe people who don't normally do stuff like this. And we didn't want to have to be like, no, 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 be careful with, you know, with that miniature. We wanted to be kind of big and durable right. and playable. But we still want them to look cool because, you know, we're adults and we have money to spend and we want cool looking components in a cool looking game. We don't want it to look like it's our sons. So it was um, very important to you from the onset that this was going to be a fully realized 3D set. All the pieces, yeah, yeah. the characters, the hazards, the arena, mm -hmm. everything has to be th not cardboard. Right? right. You want yeah. minis for everything. That's that's awesome. And that's, you know, I love the reason why <laughs> I love the reason why. Matter of fact, when we were first doing that, when we when we were getting ready to do the very first Kickstarter, I talked to Jay and I said, "Hey, man, you know, we could do we could do the pieces and like the hazards and stuff out of cardboard, and you know, it would be the funding goal would be a lot cheaper, and we could get people playing the game, and then we could work up to this." And he goes, "You mean like in Candyland?" <laughs> <laughs> I went, "I went, yeah." He goes, "We're not doing bullshit Candyland <laughs> cutouts." I went, okay, that's fair enough, yeah, man. Yeah, I got a little heated. You did. You were really bad. <laughs> about I just it. I like things to be tactile. That's sure. all it is. Yeah. And, and and the game has a lot of different textures with the components and with yeah. the miniatures and the board itself. Even even with the coins, and that was a fairly new development. Um, because it was kind of a you have almost like a character sheet in the original inception of the game. And since then we were like, you know what? Like let's do these coins and these coin counters. So you're you're not having to like erase and keep track of things and that kind of inspired a lot of the mechanics in the game that's really where the crowd pile kind of came from is we were like okay well what do we do with these coins when the hazard hits okay well let's make a crowd pile what if we competed against this crowd pile and then that kind of inspired other other things in the game well to to go on jay's point about everything being tactile there's really something to be said about games that have a lot of tactile pieces uh even for me when you open up something and there's cubes and there's coins and it's like there's just something so awesome about physical elements of a game rather than just punch out cardboard punch outs yeah um now, different feeling. oh yeah absolutely and it gives it a, a different feeling of quality as well mm -hmm. um now, Scott, you mentioned that uh, you mentioned the, briefly your original Kickstarter and it, um, your website says it's coming back to Kickstarter. And mm -hmm. a lot of the reviews out there are a couple of years old now. So mm -hmm. what's uh, what's up with the new Kickstarter and what has changed? Uh, why come back to Kickstarter now? So the original Kickstarter was us really not knowing what we were doing, mm -hmm. despite our best efforts. We kind of, you know, we had this idea well outside of the industry and really even the community. Jay and I hadn't been really playing a whole lot of um, board games. We still got together and played Rifts from time to time and things like that. But we didn't really know what was going on in the whole board game community as a whole. I think at that time I had gotten the new version version of Blood Bowl and I was really pissed off because they didn't, yeah, because yeah, they didn't have like illustrations on the cards. And I'm like, this is Games Workshop. Like you're charging a yeah. hundred dollars for this thing. You got artists falling out of your butts, and you know, you, I, I've just got text on these cards. Like, you know, it's a new version of Blood Bowl. People have been waiting for this forever. And um, so we kind of had like this weird detachment from reality. <laughs> yeah, and if you notice, like our game, it's it's not. There's not a lot to compare it to. It's kind of its own. Yeah your thing so and that's why because we're just doing what yeah. we want to do <laughs> yeah there's not a lot of influences yeah. going on with um, it. but you can tell that we're very influenced by rpgs um and Blood our, pop, yeah pop culture that we grew up with and we've thrown those elements into nexus but but to answer your question so the the original kickstarter came out um, we did a lot of things right. We did way more things wrong. We had really complicated pledges. We tried to be everything to everybody. You know, we had like a painted and unpainted painted pledge, and then we had a, 
a version that it, it came across like it didn't even have a rule book in it because we were trying to separate the legacy rules from like just the one-off game rules. And we also launched it right in the middle of Gen Con, which was also not a good idea. We <laughs> thought it was a good idea because we were like, well, it's Gen Con. Everybody's going to be talking about games and gaming. We're going to get a bunch of attention. Well, what we ended up doing is we ended up competing with every major board game outlet out there that does their big release during Gen Con. Oh, and yeah. You know, we didn't have we didn't have the funds or the recognition to go after any of that. Um, so what ended up happening is we had 300 extremely passionate backers on that project. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go back and you read through the comment section of that during the last days, because we just let it go to the end. We didn't want to cancel it. Um, and I mean, it, it read like an open love letter where, you know, people were like, I want this. Please come back. Please don't give up on the project. And we didn't like we sat down and we took two long years to really study Kickstarter more, learn more about the industry. We kept attending cons and demoing the game and showing people the game, getting feedback, getting feedback, building up our fans. We made the rules open source and we, we set up a forum, put up uh, STL files online. I, I actually wow. went and bought a 3D scanner because all of the original models were all hand sculpted um, by Roberto wow. in France. So what I did is I bought a 3D scanner and scanned all those models and put them up for free online and told people, hey, download them, play test the game. Everything's free. It's all kind of open source. Let's get this figured out. And then after two years, you know, when when Jay and I were sitting down finally putting this campaign together, I'd say probably about what, six months ago, we started really mm -hmm. getting ready to do this again. Um, we were so glad it didn't fun the first time. It, this is such a better game. It's such a better experience. And, you know, as great as everything looked, and that's where we got all the attention is everybody was like, wow, your stuff looks really good. Um, there's way more, there's way more to it at this point. There's mm -hmm. a lot of depth behind the mechanics and it's more on theme. It's more that kind of party, um, environment where and, and i wouldn't say it's an overhaul i mean it, it's mm -hmm. just slight tweaks that just mm -hmm. have really improved the gameplay right just re more refined now yeah. right by the sounds mm -hmm. of it. like yeah. getting rid of the character sheet and doing the coins mm -hmm. and and all the things that that opened up sure. re-looking at the board because when we launched the original one we really kind of had it set up for like a two-player game because that's what jay and i were interested in <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was like, well, what if, you know, I got another guy or four players? Right. And we were like, well, you know, because of the board, the way the board's set up, we can really only do two. And, you know, learning as a, you know, a newbie game designer that, no, that's not what you do. You don't you don't lock yourself into a component and then get rid of all these good ideas because yeah. you really liked this board you made at the beginning before you even knew what the hell you were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of getting past and growing past some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we 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 feel a lot better about about this campaign, and that's why it's been so long because we had a lot to learn, and we wanted to make sure, sure we did it right this time. Absolutely. Right. So I was looking on the website, and it, it mentioned that the game has not only RPG elements but also legacy elements, sort of uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, how does the story progress? Like, how do you advance the story, and how does that look? You know, will it look different for different people depending on choices and stuff that are made? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you have this whole kind of cred based system and that's going to level you up as a Lannister. So as a Lannister, you're going to be like, um, for example, Don King and somebody who just, you know, brought their first fighter into boxing. OK, yeah. Yeah. so let's say Jay just brought his first fighter into the boxing world. Nobody really cares. Nobody knows who Jay is. Nobody knows who his fighter is. So he's got to he's got to scrap and claw and work his way up. Now me, I'm Don King. When Don King brings in a fighter, even though they've never fought before, everybody's going, well, Don King has a new fighter. Don King, the guy that brought us Mike Tyson and all these great fighters. So automatically, this guy's got a certain amount of clout and fame attached to him. And Don King has the money to maybe equip him a little bit better. Okay. So the way the legacy kind of works is as a Lannister, you level up, which gives you... Um, advantages to your helots as they're first starting out because your helots are going to be dying left and right. Everything's set up to where you do not treat these things like they're people. They're disposable. You know, they're they're uh, um, an, an object of use for you. Um, but along those lines, if your helot should happen to survive multiple fights, you know that helot is also leveling up. And then you have options like 
you know, maybe you're hell at loss to arm in this fight. Do you want to go and get it genetically mutated and grow another limb at random? It may be a tentacle, it may be a claw, like who knows what it's going to be. Do you want to pay to get cybernetic implants put on this helmet? Um, and then do you want to pay to get weapon upgrades? Or do you just want to get rid of that helmet? Or do you just want to get rid of that <laughs> so, helmet? Right, it's right, right, right. Resource management because you're going to be building your your cred and your bits, and then you're going to be mm -hmm. spending it. You know, at the end of each match, it's like, what do I do? want to do do I, do I want to repair this helmet or do I just want to go grow a new one in the meat garden yeah and will those elements uh, go with you to the next game yes mm -hmm. okay yes. so so like you could sell your helmet for its organic matter which organic matter is always in large demand with the gnomes so there's wow. so that that's the type of legacy um role play type stuff that you do the other thing that um we have are, are kind of like pre-match and post-bout stories so um, events leading up to the bout, um, there's the INC, which that's the, uh, the regulating body of the, the Nexus. It's the Interdimensional Nexus Commission, okay. and they oversee everything, and they have INC officers, and those officers uh, randomly will raid barges and break up the unsanctioned bouts. Um, so we have like raid mechanics where at the beginning of the bout, you got to roll to see if there's a raid. And if there is a raid, what happens? Yeah, Does, you might have to bribe them. You might have to bribe them to get out of things and things like that. And then maybe after the bout's over, um, did somebody, you know, discover that you tampered with something or, you know, you've got different, um, things you can do to try and lean things into your favor by bri bribing the barge captain or something like that. So um, many, so many, uh, different stuff going on in this game. It sounds amazing. Like so Thank detailed you. like not only I, i've seen your miniatures your miniatures are incredibly detailed but Thank even you. the it sounds like the mechanics you have are so well thought out and well detailed as well that's it's so full it sounds amazing yeah it's very thematic because mm -hmm. for us that's the biggest thing <laughs> when it, it when it comes to games is like we love theme in a game we kind of let a game's theme drive drive what we're doing in it right. so well, and that's probably storytelling cool. yeah oh yeah yeah so how many minis come in the box? How many how many uh, how many of those? Well they're not so many, they're they're big minis. Yeah, they're big minis. Mm -hmm. So starting out, um, we're gonna have stretch goals to unlock everything, but starting out at the very beginning, if we just barely fund and we get that, you know, um, minimum order at at this funding level with our manufacturer, it's gonna have four of the big minis in it. Okay. And that'll be the uh, they, they represent the helots. Yeah. Those four. Yeah. So you have the um, you have the uh, the supremacist, you have the zealot, zealot the, the famished, and the hoarder. And the hoarder. Okay. So those would be the four starting minis. Hopefully, um, what we'd like to do is get to the to a funding level where we can unlock all eight and put all eight in into the box, um, and then um, also include a couple extra hazards. Mm -hmm. So we have a vision of what we'd like the game to be, and this is another thing that we learned from our first Kickstarter. So our first Kickstarter, we were like, we're not compromising anything. This is the game. We want everybody to have everything, and we need $100,000, please. And everybody was like, yeah, okay. What have you done? <laughs> like, I mean, this all looks great, but you, know, you want $100,000, that, that's, that's a lot. And we ended up raising half that, which is really good for like you know a couple guys who have no idea what they're doing on sure. Kickstarter to come up with you know fifty five grand. Like there was nothing. We felt horrible about it. We mm -hmm. felt like failures. But since then, looking back, watching other Kickstarters, we were like, okay, yeah, that was actually pretty good considering all the things we did wrong. So this time we're coming with something more reasonable. We're saying, hey, look, this is like kind of the bare bones game that we feel really, really good. And we feel like there's, it's fun to play and we would be proud to sell this after the campaign. This is a version of the game that we would be proud to give people and say, Hey, here's Nexus, go play Nexus. Is it everything that we want to put in it? No, but we can get there. You right. know, if, if people are really behind the idea and we get funded and it goes up, then, then we're going to have like real meaningful stretch goals that are there for the reason stretch goals are really supposed to be sure. there not as a marketing gimmick but as you know a sincere look we're going to be able to order more copies of the game right. it's going to bring our production costs down we're going to be able to put more stuff in the box and so the core box though will include how many uh how many of the traps and the hazards will it come with as well <sighs> the whole thing i think is like 26 minis and okay. only four of them are helots well, yeah. well wow so, yeah. that's so and, you got because there's pillars like and there's there's hazards yeah, so and pillars and what else? Traps. Yeah, so and you're going to get four four pillars. Um, you're going to get six floor saws, so, 
four floor spikes, four sets of the braziers, and the braziers, the, the fire actually is removable because you can kick the brazier over, and that sets the floor on fire, <laughs> oh, and that nice. kind of moves around the arena as you play. Great. Yeah, and then you've got four crates that you can bust open, and they've got everything in there from, like, weapons to sometimes, like, bombs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have Things literally you taken a video game and made it a 3D board game. That's what I'm seeing right now. This is yeah, this is really incredible. Uh, yeah. What uh, what's the future hold for Nexus? Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, your RPG uh, Nexus Redemption? So yeah, we've got we've got an RPG that we've been that we've been working on um, for a while, and we've also got we've got a novel that actually just came mm -hmm. out like a month ago. Wow! Um, it, and that's up on Amazon right now, um, and that's a, a three hundred and fifty page. Um, look into what it's like to be the at, like an absolute bottom feeder in the Nexus. So it's nice. uh, it it's it's a guy who took his whole family's fortune and came to the Nexus so he could become a Lannister. And like right when he got there, he got swindled out of everything he owned. <laughs> um, they, they you know they saw the sucker coming from a mile away. <laughs> they took him for everything he had and just left him for dead in the Nexus. And he's cleaning the arena floors um, at the beginning of the book. And um, it's it's kind of it's it's called Blood Guts and Glo Glory, <laughs> and it's it's all about his rise to power in the Nexus. And it's wow. it's an interesting journey. Yeah, it, it's a fun read. Yeah. Wow. So that was written by Josh Vaught. Um, and he's, he's a great author. He's, um, he, but we sat down, we went over the story concept with him. He loved it. He ran with it. He made an amazing novel and we got Michael Recklin to illustrate it like old school, black and white illustrations. Like when we were growing up as kids that you would have in your books yep. that, you know, we've got, we've yeah. got the book filled with those as well. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a great read. So yeah, we hope to, and expansions for Nexus. Yes, yeah. I mean for sure. Tons of expansions yeah, planned for Nexus. Um, one of the things that we want to do. So one of the things that you'll notice is we have the alternate minis, the alternate sculpts, where um, the original minis were designed by Danny Cruz, and then we had those sculpted um, by Roberto. And then we went to another artist and we said, okay, look, these this, these are motivations, and this is what they're all about, and don't look at anything else. Just from your own imagination, we want you to illustrate all these motivations. And uh, Dong Lu did that, mm -hmm. and then we took those and we had Roberto sculpt those. So our plan is, is once Nexus is actually out there in the world and people are playing it and, and it's a funded thing, is every year we want to uh, approach a different artist wow. and have them do their interpretation. Oh, their of the oh wow. And so every year we can just release like, hey, this is this artist's interpretation of the motivations. So every year, you know, our fans have something to kind of get excited about. And hopefully over time, we've got kind of a wide range of things where people can kind of mix and match and, and play right. to their taste. Because wow. one of the other things that was important about Nexus to us is like when you play Blood Bowl or Warhammer um, and you're getting into the hobby, like you've got a whole army that you have to paint mm -hmm. of like these little yeah. miniatures. So with Nexus, we really wanted to set it up where it's like you, you can get one like big miniature that's, you know, well sculpted where you can do just some basic painting things on it. And it's still going to look really good because of the detail of the sculpt. And you can take your one miniature and show up at your buddy's house and play some Nexus. Right. So we can kind of make that part of it a little bit more accessible to people mm -hmm. that don't have the time um, or the ability to sit down and paint like an entire army before they you know start playing a game you guys have got a lot going on in nexus that sounds absolutely <laughs> incredible i can't wait to, to get it on my own table and play it to be honest with you it sounds awesome the kickstarter starts tomorrow september 29th guys it's good PM Eastern. Yep, it's all happening it's all <laughs> it's all happening guys good luck on the campaign thank you so much for joining us today uh i can't wait to see your game Thank you guys so much yeah, for having thank us. Thank you so much. Like this means the world to us to have people that, you know, want to talk to us about the and, project. And enthusiastic about it. Yeah. This yeah, is like really appreciate this it. This is the best for us. So thank you guys for having us. You're very welcome. Sure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Man, thank you guys so much for having us on here. This has been amazing. Um, everybody, please, if you can, tomorrow, back the Kickstarter. And and more important than that, probably the most important thing you can do right now click that subscribe button okay that is really what we need from you more than anything right jay yeah that one right there yeah right there <laughs>